to me this week. So Thursday morning, I knew my paycheck was going to be hitting my account. So I got on and I was getting ready to pay the bills. And I looked at my account and it showed that PayPal was going to take $1,000 out. And I was like, wait a minute. Why is PayPal taking $1,000 out of my account? I didn't do this. Like my husband didn't do this. We are not giving PayPal $1,000. It's not happening. So I got on PayPal and it was all in Spanish. <laughs> but it didn't look like I was giving out $1,000. It looked like someone was giving me $1,000. So I was like, okay, Lord, you said that you would rebuke the devourer Come for on. our sakes. Come on, amen. We just need to give you what is already yours. And we do that. We are tithers. We tithe faithfully. That was a choice that we made a long time ago. And amen. we are sticking to that. So I said, well, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to get to the bank before they take the money. Well, I didn't get to the bank before they took the money. The $1,000 was gone by 820. I'm like, what's happening? What bank transfer happens at 3.30 in the morning and clears by 820? It's just not happening. But I got to the bank, and she said, don't worry. Don't worry. We should have your money back 
by the end of the day. And I was like, no, Lord, I have to pay my tithe. Not I have to pay my bills. I have to pay my tithe. And my tithe is coming from that money. And the money was back before the day was even over. Oh, amen. And, you know, the crazy part is, all I had to do was trust God to bring it back. I didn't have to worry. He had us. So, Lord, I want to thank you for that protection that we have from you, that you rebuke the devourer for our sakes. And, Lord, I pray that for every single person in this room, because I know that they're all givers, and it's all for your glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
we serve, amen? I wanted to read one passage of scripture out of Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy 7, verse 12, I believe it was. Yes, verse 12. If you listen to the regulations, and uh, these regulations, talking about found in the word of God, and fully obey them, the Lord your God will keep his covenant of unfailing love with you, as he has promised with an oath to your ancestors. He will love you, he will bless you, he will give you many children, he will give you fertility in the land and your animals. When you arrive in the land, he swore to give your ancestors, you will have a large harvest of grain, new wine, olive oil, great herds of cattle, sheep, and goats. You'll be blessed above all nations on the earth. None of your men or women shall be childless. All your livestock will bear young, and the Lord will protect you from sickness. He will not let you suffer the terrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but will inflict them on who? Our enemies. So all of those verses so far is talking about you are, as a child of God, prosperous and productive and, and reproducing and multiplying and everything you put your hand to. You will not be sick. You'll see that your enemies are getting those types of things, right? You will destroy all the nations the Lord your God hands over to you. Show them no mercy. Do not worship their gods or they will trap you. That's talking about our enemy now. Come on. You'll destroy your enemy. Show them no mercy. Now, who's, who's our enemy? The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So I want you to look at the person next to you and say, uh, you're not my enemy. <laughs> I'm going to destroy my enemy and you're not it. Amen. Verse 17 says, perhaps you will think to yourselves... How can we ever conquer these nations that are so much more powerful than we are? Have you ever looked at a time of, of adversity? You ever looked at a mountain in your life and thought, how in the world am I going to overcome that? It seems so powerful. It seems so big in my life. How are we going to do that? Yep. Yep. Verse 18 says, but do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of that giant. Don't be afraid of that powerful thing that you, that you think is powerful that's standing before you. Don't be afraid of them. Just remember. Everybody say remember. remember. Remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh in the land of Egypt. What, what's that saying to you today? Remember what the Lord your God did in the past. Remember the victories that you've already had. Remember that enemy that you had last year, the year before, that problem, that obstacle, that thing that seemed powerful, that mountain in your life that the Lord helped you overcome. This is just a pebble in the way compared to that. Isn't that what he's saying? Remember where you've come. Remember the victories. Remember when I brought you out of Egypt. This is nothing. Ne next verse. Remember the great terrors the Lord your God sent against your enemies. You saw it with your own eyes. Remember the miraculous signs and wonders. Remember the strong hand and the powerful arm that delivered you in your past. Come on. The Lord your God will use this same power today today to deliver you from whatever that problem is that you're facing right now whatever that is the same power that delivered you in the past he's listen he's still alive yes, he is. he's still on the throne he hasn't somehow lost his power the same power that delivered you in the past is the same power that's going to deliver you today the lord will use this against what you fear <laughs> can we use those words instead of against the people you fear the lord will use this same power against this thing that you fear 20, and the Lord your God will send a terror to drive out the very trace of that thing that you think is standing in your way. Do not be afraid. God is with us today. Isn't that what he's saying there in a nutshell? Do not be afraid. The Lord our God is with us. you have something to take out of that? Yep, come to a microphone though or bring him a mic something. Now is not the time to be afraid. Amen. Okay, so let's go back to that. 
Monica, I'm sorry, I'm messing things up just a little bit. But can we go back to that song? Because I think there is an anointing resting on that song this morning, the breakthrough. And so I would like, honey, can you come up here with me, please? I'm going to, anybody that is looking for something in their lives that they need to break through and get free. Of, this is your chance to shout that hallelujah, to make your victory plain, okay? So if that's one, it doesn't have to be a lot of people. One or more, Brenda and I are just going to anoint you with oil. If we can find some oil. Right there. And we are going to get this done in your life, okay? So everybody in the room's living victoriously. You're not believing to break through in anything. Is that what we're saying? Nobody in the room needs anything today. Nobody needs a breakthrough. If you need a breakthrough in the room today, come to the altar. This is what the altars are for. This is how I fight my battles, right up here in the presence of God. We're not going to ask you all the details. We're just going to lay hands on you and boldly declare, this is what the Lord our God is saying to you today. You are victorious in me. The same God who brought you through that thing in the past is the same God who's going to bring you through it today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Listen, we've been in the presence of the Lord this morning. I hope you received something. Amen. You know, kind of the, if I could say it this way, the vision for our praise and worship team is to create an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit can do what only he can do. You know, we're not up here performing. We're not up here because, you know, this is what we do on Sunday mornings. There's a, you know, you're supposed to play a couple songs and then we read some scriptures and we go home. No, that's, that's not, nothing is that social club atmosphere of what we're trying to produce here. We're trying to, we're, all the work, all the labor, all the money invested is simply to create an atmosphere where the ground of your heart is being tilled so that the Holy Spirit can begin to work in your life, that you literally come out of here a different person than when you came in. Amen? So we gave you the opportunity, and I'm, I'm praying that you came in excited, anticipating, and received from, from some, something from the presence of God today. Amen? Amen? All right. Greet somebody. Tell them how much you love them. Kids are dismissed. When you've been married as long as I have, you learn a few things. What's really important in love? It's the gifts. Yeah. Love, it is words, it's poetry, it's music, just because. No, love is a simple nod in the direction of the person that you love. That is true love. You don't say anything, you just go, uh. That's love. That, that's how love is. Oh, you're a real Don Juan. <laughs> he broke up with me. Oh, thanks. You don't want to get her lingerie because, well, that just comes across as selfish. Uh... Do you remember what you said to me that won me over? <laughs> remember that night? What did he say? It was New Year's Eve and he didn't want to come to this party. And then all of a sudden, there he is. He runs up to me and says, I came here tonight because when you realize that you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. So I hate to burst this love bubble, but that was straight out of When Harry Met Sally. Who's Harry? Uh, who's Sally? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What I do know is, you will make me want to be a better man. Still me. Love is, uh, love is, it's community, you know? It, it, it's local. We create pyramids that are so universal to make this life stand as it is today. And that makes up the human structure. When are you moving out, Austin? When I feel like it, all right? Just look at me, just look at me and say, Doreen, I love you because of blank. All right. <clears throat> Doreen, I love you because of blank. Don't get her anything that forces you to ask her size. And whatever you do, don't guesstimate her size. I want to turn the bathroom into my chair. You will not do that! That is my room! That is my space! God, it's my space. Tom was my first friend. You remember Tom? Remember? I love Tom. 
I loved him. I, I gave him the best two weeks of my life. That first anniversary, we had no money to buy cards, so we, we scrounged up all the coins that we could find and we, we bought ourselves a, a Snickers bar. We put it on our best plates and we sat at that little kitchen table. We ate like royalty. Still to this day, whenever there's an anniversary or Valentine's or just because, we celebrate the same way. And it's in these moments that I think about love, our love, the ups and the downs. And I thank God that she said yes to a guy like me. Amen. Look at somebody and tell you I love you today. That was weak. Let's try that again. Come on, tell somebody you love them today. Come on. Amen, amen. And in reference to that video with the one guy, listen, if you're 30 and you're still living in your parents' bedroom, get out, please, would you? If you're 30, it's time to move on, please, would you just get out? I'll say it because they can't, right? <laughs> Good morning, Cornerstone. Man, we're excited that you're with us today. I'd like for you sometime today to take an opportunity to come up here and look at these panels. We've been raising money to, uh, to, oh, to get some sound. <laughs> I'll fix that. To get some sound panels on the ceiling. If you see these, these are like a, kind of like a honeycomb shape. This is a two foot by four foot, two foot by two foot. So these would go on the ceiling. They're saying that we need 46 of those on the sanctuary ceiling. Another 46-ish in the, in the foyer to get that terrible echo that's in the foyer gone. Currently, we're at almost $4,500 in our building pledge. Thank you, Jesus. That's a good spot to clap your hands and say amen. The Lord is good. <laughs> Faithfulness of the people, and look at the thing climbing. It's going to be there before you know it. Amen. So keep, keep going forward. Again, check out the panels up here as well, and then those over there, and let's keep watching what God does. Amen. All right. Today, I want to talk to you about God is the gatekeeper. I want you to say, God sees what I don't see. God sees what I don't see. He is the gatekeeper. Revelation 3, 7 says, This message is from the one who is holy and true. He's talking about Jesus. Is he holy? Is he true? Did he send us some messages? He did. Okay, so this message is from Jesus, the one who has the keys of David. What he opens, no one can close. What he closes, no one can open. So God opens doors and God closes doors. God is the gatekeeper. Amen. So we've all seen his favor in our, in our lives. We've seen salvation. We've seen promotion. We've seen healings take place. At least you should have. If you're not, keep, keep, stretch your faith a little further because those are all things that you can have. He, he is a God who is actively operating in our lives. He opens doors, but he is the same God. The same God who opens doors also closes doors for your benefit. Amen. So maybe you prayed. Maybe you fasted, maybe you sowed a little extra money in the offering and you still didn't get that promotion that you were believing for. Maybe you applied for a loan because you felt that car or that house or whatever it was was something that you needed. Maybe that relationship that you were believing for didn't work out. Come on. So often we feel discouraged because something didn't work out. Somehow we feel that because, because that didn't happen the way I was believing for, that somehow God has let me down. You ever been there? Come on. Proverbs 19.3 says that people, say people, say I'm a people. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness and then get angry at the Lord for it. Come on. It's not the Lord who's ruining your life. God has a plan. He said before the foundations of the world, he had a plan for your life. If you'll just walk in it, it's a good one. So if problems are arising, it's because we detoured somewhere. Come on we got to understand God sees the big picture in our lives. He knows where every road leads. He knows every ditch. He knows every pothole. He knows where the drop-offs are. He knows where every dead end is. Come on. He sees the shortcuts. He sees the traffic jams. He sees the delays that you do not see. Amen. He knows what roads are just a waste of time or a waste of energy, a waste of money. He knows the roads that are just going to be heartache and pain. Listen, he's trying to de de detour you from 
the bad roads of life. Come on, we got to understand God sees what we don't see. And so if we're going to walk by faith, it starts with trusting God to lead the way. Amen. God sees the big picture. He may close the door because you're believing too small. You ever been there? You're believing for something that's subpar to what the real plan is, son. You need to step it up a little bit. Come on. Uh, so he's trying to limit you from going in the wrong direction. Maybe, maybe that thing that you're believing for would limit where God's trying to take you. Maybe, maybe another door closed because the timing is wrong. Maybe it's, yes, that's the plan, but not yet. You ever been there? Or maybe, maybe the door is closing because the people that are supposed to be involved aren't ready yet. Look at your neighbor and say, hurry up, would you? <laughs> Come on. Come on, you ever been there? Listen, we need to learn to trust that God has our best interests in mind all the time. All the time. When a door closes, you may never know what God is saving you from. Come on. But we need to trust Him. And so if your prayers are not answered the way that you want them to be answered or they're not answered in your timing, it's not time to get discouraged. Come on, feeling like somehow God lets you down. No, we need to have a bigger perspective. Realize that you don't see everything that God sees. Come on, there's a reason that God closed that door. There's something better in store if you just hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Learn to trust Him. Proverbs 3, 5, I think, is one that we should bank our lives on in all things. Trust in the Lord. With all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. He can show you the way. Walk in it. Come on. If you're chasing that promotion and it didn't work out, trust that God must have something better in store. You're running after that car, it didn't work out. You're running after that house, it didn't work out. God must have something better in store. Come on. Shake off the disappointment. It's time to move forward. Again, if you're trusting God, if you're walking by faith, God will bring the right whatever it is across your path. Come on. Know this, that Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster. They are plans for a future and for hope. Is that you today? Is that you today? Come on. Do you know that God has plans for you? God has plans that are a good plan, plans to prosper you. And so if you're seeking God and you're asking God to lead God and direct you in, in, in this place where God is guiding you, don't be surprised if some doors open and some doors close. Come on. You might not understand right now why that's taking place. You might feel this opportunity that, God, God you just closed that door. That was a, an opportunity of a lifetime. What are you doing? Come on. One day you're going to look back and you're going to understand exactly why, closed that, why he closed that door. You may not get it right now. You may not ever get it on this life. But eventually when you're in heaven, you'll understand why. But I'm just telling you, a lot of times we'll see a little bit down the road why God closed that door. I remember, you know, many of you walked with us as we were believing for a house, praying for this one, praying for that one. A couple of years we went through this where we were looking at these houses and this house and I remember one house specifically on Pentecost Highway that, man, we just fell in love with. We thought, this is it. This has got to be it. It didn't work out. And we trusted God, and we kept moving forward, and now look at the, we see where the Lord was trying to bring us to. This house we're in now fits us perfectly. And honestly, our needs have changed so much since we were looking at the Pentecost house, that would have never worked. Would have never worked. Isn't that amazing that God knew in even just a short amount of time how our needs would change? And something we were pressing and fasting and believing and had other people's believing with us trying to get this house. The whole time it's the wrong one. Door closes. If you're not careful, you'll let these closed doors deflate you to the place where you'll just stop. Or you keep trying to push the wrong door open. Right? We need to believe him. That he has our best interest in mind. Believe that he opens doors and that he closes doors. And understand that if it didn't open, it's the wrong place. It's the wrong time. It's the wrong people. And if we had settled for that, we would have been stuck in some place that was subpar to what his plan really was for our lives. 
Come on. I used to get really excited about open doors and really bummed out about closed ones. You ever been there? But now we can see differently. Now we see, now we thank God for the closed doors as much as the open doors. Now we understand that God loves us so much that he will guard us from going down the wrong path if it's going to hinder or limit our calling and, and our destiny on this planet. Amen. Listen, and our goal today is when you walk out of here that you have that same trust, that you have that same confidence that God is in control. He is still on the throne. He sees what you do not see. And if you're trusting him, he will lead you. He will guide you. He will open doors and he will close doors. If you trust him, if you trust him, he will direct your, your footsteps. Like David said in Psalms 31, 14, Lord, I am trusting you. Oh, Lord, you are my God. I'm trusting you. My future is in your hands. Is that your heart this morning? Do you call him Lord? If you don't, get over to Romans 10, 9, and 10. But if he's Lord of your life and you're trusting him to, to lead, guide, and direct you, that the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. If I believe this scripture, then I'm going to trust him through every open door, and I'm going to trust him through every closed door. When I don't get that thing that I'm praying for, or it doesn't happen in the timing that I think it should, I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I trust you, God. Come on. And your attitude is, I know that this door didn't close by accident because I'm trusting my Father to lead me. I know that God closed that, that door for my good. And so, Father, I say, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. Luke 22, we see Jesus doing the same thing. Right? He, he's, he's just coming out of a large furnace up a room. He just had communion, uh, last supper with, with his disciples, Right? Uh, he goes out to the Mount of Olives like he had many times in the past, and he, his disciples follow him, and he says, listen, pray so that you don't fall into temptation. And then he goes about a stone's throw away from the rest of the disciples, and it says in verse 42, Father, if it is your will, take this cup of suffering away from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Do you see the heart of, of Jesus here? Do you see the attitude of Jesus that he's submitting to the Father in all things, and when he does... Angels actually come and minister to him and strengthen him and prepare him for the road ahead. Come on. When you believe that God is in control, it takes the pressure off of this life, of everyday life. And, and I'm telling you, there's a freedom in just trusting God to lead the way. Oh, that, must, oh, that door closed. It must not be it. We'll go this way. Or it must not be timing to get there. Whatever it is, Father, I'm trusting you. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Come on. There's a freedom. And trusting God. Joshua 1 8 says to study this book of the law. Why? Because it's a lamp. It's the light. It's showing you the way. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. Obey everything written in it, and only then will you be prosperous and succeed in all you do. Listen, there's a freedom, and there's a security, and there's a safety, and there's a, a satisfaction in finding God's will for your life and running in that plan, running in that path, walking after God. Proverbs 133 says that whoever listens to me, whoever trusts me, will dwell safely and secure at ease without fear of evil. Is that you this morning in this crazy world that we live in? Is this you? Because this is what you can have. If we're trusting God to lead the way through all the craziness of this world, we can have peace, we can rest at ease, knowing that these evils will not come near our dwelling. Come on. There's a freedom in trusting God. Freedom in knowing that God is the author and the finisher of our faith, that he's leading the way. You know, I heard a story about a man who was interviewing for a very prestigious job at a very large company. It was going to be a huge pay increase for him. It did mean moving his family across in, into another state. And he testified that he went to this company, he went through the interview, and they actually gave him a tour around the factory, and he said it was a couple, couple hours that he was there. And after talking with them for all that time, they went back to the office and they said, listen, your credentials are very good, you're a very nice guy, but we just don't feel like you're a good fit for our company. And he had been praying and fasting before this, and so he said he, he walked away from that meeting fe feeling very deflated and feeling like, man, Lord, I really thought like this was a way that I was going to prosper my family and be able to give more, and ha you know, he had dreams and aspirations. Well, lo and behold, not too long after that interview, that company 
was, was exposed for all this fraudulent activity going on behind the scenes. The, file, the company filed for bankruptcy, and literally thousands of employees lost their jobs in one day. And if this guy had taken that job, he would have lost 39 years of retirement benefits transferring. God sees what we do not see. He is the gatekeeper. He opens doors and he closes doors for your benefit when you trust him. He knows what he's doing. Do not get discouraged at the closed doors. Proverbs 19.21 says you can make many plans. Man can make their plans, but the Lord's purpose is going to prevail. I want you to see that when you pray and when you believe and you stand in faith, if the door doesn't open, it's a sign from God that it must not be his best. God's not letting you down. He's doing you a favor. He's protecting you from the heartache. Amen. Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not be afraid. I am with you. Do not be discouraged. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. And I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. That's the God we serve. If you're trusting God, then be content. If you're trusting God, walk in his ways. Whatever answer he gives you, be content. Be content. You don't see what he sees. So many times we say that we're trusting God, but then we get unhappy and maybe even a little bit moody when things don't go our way. Well, I thought you were trusting God. Come on. <laughs> I miss you sitting there, Mama G. <laughs> we need to commit our lives to his plan. God, if this is what you want then I'm asking you to bring it to my life. Father, if this is your best for my life, for my wife, for my children, then I'm asking you to bring it to pass. And Father, if it works out, I give you glory. And Father, if it doesn't work out, I give you glory. Come on, refuse to be discouraged. Refuse to quit. Stay in faith. It's this attitude and this outlook in life that relieves the pressure. You're not going to get frustrated if it doesn't work out because you trust God. Do you trust God, Monica? So many times we've had this conversation through life. Do you trust God? Psalms 37, 23 says the footsteps of the righteous, the footsteps of the godly. Is that you this morning? Are you righteous? Are you in right standing with God this morning? If so, it says that he, your footsteps are ordered by God himself, by the Lord of your life. Trust him. Sometimes it's difficult to accept that closed door, but if we're trusting him, Right? It's hard to accept because that opportunity looks so great in our eyes, in our minds. This, oh, this is such an opportunity. Listen, the Lord sees what you don't see. Come on. Well, the problem is, is our, limited, our limited thinking. The problem is our perspective is limited, right? We don't see it. Listen, God has a much bigger, much more extensive plan for your life than you could ever imagine or think about. You know, in preparing this and just thinking about these types of things, you know, when we were looking for a building for this church, how many times did we, I think we looked at every building in this town. How many times did we, did we go around a building or go in a building and stand in the parking lot of that building and say, Father, this could work. It's so glorious. Lord, look at this. We claim this building for your kingdom and your glory. But we, we always said, but not our will, but yours be done. And the door would close. And we go to the next one and say, oh, man, good thing that one didn't work out. This one's so much better. Look at the potential this one has. Father, we claim it for your kingdom and your glory. Nope, that one didn't work out. And so, lo and behold, he brings us to an old abandoned <laughs> lumber yard. <laughs> Been sitting empty for 20 years. But, hey, lo and behold, it's on the main four corners of town, in the main business part of the city with two main entrances. Look what the Lord has done. Ten acres of ground to sit on. Listen, if it was up to us, we would have settled at that first moldy, holes-in-the-ceiling building. The old country market building over there was one of the first ones we looked at. That place was such a dump. If it was up to us, we'd still be there. But when you trust God and you walk by faith, you trust Him for the closed doors as much as the open doors. Come on now. Whatever your plan is, Father, I submit to it. We need to understand that God is the author and the finisher of our faith, and he will never lead you anywhere to fail. How often do we tell our own kids, no, you can't do that, or no, you can't do that right now, maybe later? How many times do we ask our kids to trust us when they don't understand? 
Our father's not any different. They walk away thinking, man, my mom and dad is so mean. They're so controlling. They just don't want me to have any fun. No, we see something that you don't see. We see something. God is the same way. God sees what we do not see. Stop being discouraged. Stop that bad attitude. Walk by faith. God has our absolute best in mind. Again, Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. He'll direct your steps. Proverbs 20, 24 says the Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? You don't need to see the big picture of everything God's doing in your life. You just need to walk in that step and walk in that step and walk in that step. And before you know it, look at, the, whoa, look at where the Lord has taken us. Come on. He has a plan. And his plan, according to Ephesians 3.20, is exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. That's God's plan. Understand that on the way to our destination, there's going to be some closed doors for our benefit. And I'm telling you, one day you're going to look back and say, my God, thank you for that unanswered prayer. Thank you, God, that you didn't allow me to attach myself to that person. Good grief. Look at them now. Come on. Thank you, Father, that that property didn't work out. Thank you, God, that loan didn't go through. Thank you that that relationship didn't work out. Man, what would my life look like if I had ran down that path? Thank you, Lord, for closed doors as much as open doors. And so the question I'm asking today is, will you remain in faith or will you get discouraged? Will you continue to speak in faith or will you start complaining? Oh, nothing good ever happens to me. Hmm. Be it according to your faith. Come on. God knows what he's doing. We need to trust him. And instead, according to 1 Thessalonians, if we'll do this instead of whining and complaining and quitting, rejoice always. 17, pray without ceasing. 18, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of Jesus Christ for you. Come on, thank him for every opportunity. Thank him for every open door. Thank him for the closed doors. Thank, you for, thank him for bringing the right people into your life and weeding out the wrong ones. You may not see it right now, but God's pulling that weed out of your life because it's going to hinder your future. Keep going. Again, Revelation 3, he holds the keys. What he closes, no, what he opens, no one can close. What he closes, no one can open. Closed doors are just as important as open doors. I mean, seriously, what brought Cornerstone to the old 84 lumber building? Closed doors. Closed doors. But as soon as this one was opened, no one could shut it. I mean, the, the realtor himself that listed this building, that his very job is to sell it to every schmuck that comes his way, says you can't have this building. When God opens the door, no man can close it. Come on. We need to get this down in our spirit today and not be discouraged by closed doors. God loves you so much that he will not answer prayers that are going to hinder you, that are going to hurt you, that are not part of your destiny, that somehow is going to limit your growth. We need to trust him and allow God's plan to play out in our lives. We need to understand that Isaiah 55, 8, God said himself, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, says the Lord. Verse 9, as the heavens are higher than the earth, my ways and my thoughts are higher than yours. We need to understand that God sees what we do not see. God's plans are not your plans. We need to get ourselves lined up with what he wants to do in, in our lives. Maybe things didn't turn out the way you thought they should. Let these words sink deep into your heart today. God's ways are better. His plans are bigger. And his dreams are more rewarding. That relationship didn't work. Well, man, I'm just telling you, if you trusted, if you were so infatuated with the relationship that was wrong, wait till it's the right one. Something went so bad, we've convinced ourselves we can't be without that thing. No, we need to trust God. We need to trust God and stop trying to make things happen in our own power and accord. Trust God. I'm asking you today, instead of getting all worked up and getting bitter and, and, and getting all in a fuss about it, why don't you just trust God? 
Why don't you just trust God? When you find yourself at a closed door, you have a choice. You can become bitter, you can give up on your dreams, or you can just acknowledge the lordship of Jesus Christ and say, okay, Father, I'm following you. If you pass the test, God will release his best. Come on. Give God the opportunity to fulfill your dreams in his ways, in his plan, in his destination, in his resources. Look at Genesis 22 too. Can you imagine being this guy? God tells Abraham, take your son Isaac. You know that one that you love so much? That son Isaac that I said is the promised seed that I'm going to fulfill my promises through. The, you know, that son <laughs> that I said his descendants are going to be as numerous as the stars in the sand. Take that son and go sacrifice him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being in this place? Surely, get behind thee, Satan. That can't be from God. That doesn't, line, that doesn't line up with the word of God. That can't be right. He said this is the promised seed. That can't be it. He passed the test. And as a result, God brought him the best. And the question we're asking today is, will you be able to follow God even when you don't understand? It makes absolutely no sense to me, Father, why this door is closed. How is it possible that this is not your plan? Probably about six months before we started this church, I had an opportunity to be the pastor of another church. I had went to a meeting, and my father in the faith was preaching that night. I didn't even know he was there. We walk into this church service. I'm like, Dr. Lemon, what are you doing? Had some fellowship with him. The pastor of that church called me that afternoon and asked if we could go to dinner. I think it was Monday, the next day. And so we met him at this restaurant, and he sat us down across the table, and he said, listen, I just want you to know that I've already talked to Dr. Lemon about this because I know he's a person of authority in your life. He said, listen, we have this church that's already established. There's about 100 people that are already coming here. The building's paid for. I got another assignment I have to get to, and we believe you're called to be the pastor of this church. And I said, well, obviously I'm going to talk to Dr. Lemon about this. I'm going to pray, to pray and ask God about this. And so we kind of left it at that, and I talked to Dr. Lemon about it the next day, and he said, you know, I don't, I don't have any, any checks in my spirit about it. You know, it's, he said, you've been trained for this. And so we started to move forward in that, and, and inside it just felt wrong. And I have talked to countless pastors about this story since, you know, just meeting new pastors and telling my story and things like that. And they said, I don't know one man in ministry who would have turned that down. And I said, I'm just telling you, the Holy Ghost is telling me this is wrong. Door closed. There are times that the enemy, if he can't shake you from doing what's right, will try to push you in the wrong direction that seemed right. Come on. And all it takes is just one degree off right here. Looks good, looks good, looks good. But 20 years from now, one degree off here is way off at the end. Come on. Will you follow God when you do not understand? Abraham passed the test. When you face disappointment, when your plans don't work out, will you stay in faith? Will you honor God with your words and your deeds? Again, Proverbs 20, 24 says the Lord directs our steps. So why do we need to try to figure out everything along the way? Listen, we can find freedom in just trusting God. There's freedom in just trusting God. God has oversight. God sees things that we don't see. Faith is the key. Now, I come across this, this story. It's not a true story, but it's interesting. A woman is... is at, at the end of the day, this woman is talking with God, and she's complaining. She said, man, Lord, I really had this particularly bad, bad day. My alarm didn't go off this morning. I was late to work. At lunch, they made my sandwich wrong. And driving home, my cell phone dropped a very important call. This is ridiculous, Father. What a bad day. Were you even here today? 
And God replied and said, let's start at the top. Your alarm did not go off because there was a crazy driver on the freeway and I delayed you on purpose. The sandwich at lunch was made by a cook who was sick with the flu and I cut off your cell phone call because that person has been spreading rumors. I protected you. We don't see everything that God sees. He knows exactly what he is doing all the time. Psalms 139 says, You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment laid out before a single day passed. You may not understand everything along the way. You may be experiencing a bumpy road right now, probably because of some bad decisions that you made. But God is still on the throne. And I'm telling you that God has a reason for every open door and God has a reason for every closed doors. We need to trust him that he is the author and the finisher of our faith and he's never going to lead you to something that's going to cause you demise. Come on. You know, another story I heard about a pastor who was planning an event overseas. He said that this event cost tens of thousands of dollars. You know, they'd already been running... <clears throat> Uh, TV ads, they'd already been running radio ads, they actually paid for billboards all over advertising this event. It come to the week of, and they, they had set up the stage, and all the sound system was already in place, and it, two days before this event that had been two years in the making, the local government shut it down because of a pandemic in their area. They got very discouraged, and they felt, my goodness, all the time and all the energy and all the money wasted to have this kind of result. How deflating. And they got on the plane and started to leave. Lo and behold, all of a sudden, they come across the news that the exact same time that they were supposed to be having this event, some local rebels staged a coup against the government, and the entire city, the entire region was in absolute chaos. There was shooting in the streets. People were dying. People were looting. Fires all over the place. And if they had scheduled this event and kept with the timeline of the event, they would have been smack dab in the middle of all of that rioting. We need to trust God. We need to trust God that he's, he opens doors and he closes doors for a reason. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, Right now on this earth, we see things imperfectly. But in heaven, we will see things with perfect clarity. Right now, you might not understand why, but I'm telling you, one day you will see that God had a plan all along, was working behind the scenes, leading and guiding and directing you to the exact place that he wanted you to be. Last story, there was a student that, that graduated. He wanted to be an engineer, and he actually applied to several engineering colleges, and he never got any responses. And so while he was, he was, again, he was starting to get deflated, and while he was waiting, he ended up going on a medical mission trip with some local doctors. They went down and did some medical missions. And while he was on this medical trip, he saw the compassion for people. He saw the heart for people, and, and he come back with a new perspective in life. He said, no, I don't want to be an engineer anymore. I really want to help people. And so he came home and immediately applied to a medical college and instantly received acceptance. Funny thing was, the next day he got a letter from the first engineering college that he had applied to and got accepted. Had he received that letter before that mission trip, he would have never became a doctor. We need to understand that God opens doors for your success and God closes doors for your success. He has a purpose for everything that he's doing. He has a divine destiny. He sees the big picture. He's trying to get you to it. Do not be discouraged with a closed door. God is directing your steps. And so again, I'm asking you, will you stay in faith and trust him through every adversity? Will you trust him when, when it just seems like I don't understand what's happening right now, Lord. Take your dreams and lay them at the feet of the Father and declare what His Word says about your situation. Proverbs 55, 22 says, Give your burdens to the Lord, and He will take care of you. He will not allow the godly to slip and fall. If you'll take this perspective, if you'll, by faith, receive this verse into your life, you can live in victory. I'm telling you, like Abraham, when you pass this test... When you get over this doubt and this unbelief, when you continue to move forward, when you don't understand, when you pass the test, God will give you his absolute best. I declare that when you do, you will see abundantly, 
exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think because of God's plan. Trust him, and I promise you God has a bright future in store. Do you, do you, do you receive it today? Come on, stand on your feet for just a second. I do want to announce, as we're closing here, I just want to announce that we have a special meeting this Thursday night from 7 to 8.30. Um, now, there's not any, well, there's a few teens in the room. We're going to open this up to 12 and older, and basically what we're doing is we're going to lay a foundation of what God's Word says about sex. I believe that this is, this is a very timely message that the Holy Ghost is saying that, listen, your teenage people, your teenage sons and daughters need to know from a, from a biblical standpoint, from, from the pastor of the church, what does God's Word say about the physical relationship that God has predestined us to have? And so I'm asking you that if you have somebody that's in that age bracket, 12 and older, and you want to learn more about what the Bible says about these things, come at 7. We're going to have a little bit of fun and fellowship ahead of time, and then we're going to come in the sanctuary, and we're going to knock it out what the Word of God says. But listen, again, I believe that this is um, orchestrated by the Holy Ghost for this time and this season. Amen? Okay, so I throw it out there, and if it's just me and my kids, then that's the way it'll be. <laughs> Father, again, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. We thank you, Father, for the love that we experience from all of these other believers that are gathered here today. Father, thank you for the love of the Father, the love that we see in your word for your people. Thank you for the, just the, the sweet presence, the, the peace from your presence in this place today, Father. I pray that as we walk out, that we will never be the same from what's been imparted to us today. May we truly understand that if we're right in, in your sight, that you guide and direct our steps. We look to you, Father, to protect us in all things. And all God's people said, amen. I call you blessed.